1962, 10-year-old Bruce Hollenbeck and his 7-year-old cousin Chari were playing in the woods behind his parents' house when they suddenly heard a high-pitched whistle noise. The two children looked towards the direction of the noise and saw what can only be described as a faceless white blob in a humanoid shape peeking at them from behind a tree. They were absolutely terrified at the sight of this strange creature that they ran straight back to Bruce's home. The next sighting occurred in 1964. An unknown man was taking a nice evening hike in the forest when he saw a big white blob floating towards him. The man was so scared he took off running and jumped over a six foot long pond while making his escape. The man decided to return to the forest with a very skeptical friend. The two of them were armed with a shovel and a pitchfork. It wasn't long before the man noticed his friend's face lose all color. His friend then pointed to a white blob that was floating high in the air and moving between the trees. The men threw down their weapons and fled as fast as their feet could take them. The last known sighting either took place later that year in 1964 or 14 years later in 1978. Two 14 year old boys named Russell Lee and Barry Scott were camping in the forest when they heard loud thumping noises outside their tent. The two boys looked out of the tent and saw a white figure floating above the ground. The figure continued to make a thumping noise as it disappeared into a dense thicket. Unlike the two sightings before, the white blob differed in its appearance. The boys couldn't even agree on how it looked. Barry described it as being bell-shaped and Russell said it looked like the Virgin Mary. There have been no more sightings of the Kinderhook blob, but maybe, just maybe, it's still there in the woods, hovering and waiting to be seen. In 1922, cyclist and inventor of the spark plug, Albert Champion, married a young showgirl named Edna Crawford. Shortly after getting married, Edna started having an affair with a man named Charles Brazell. For a long time, she carried on with both her husband and her lover, but after five years, it all came to an end. Albert was found dead in his hotel room in Paris. Edna and Charles told the authorities that Albert died from a weak heart. It is believed that he was murdered by Charles, but the authorities believed it too, and Edna received Albert's fortune. The couple went back to the States and then moved to the penthouse at 57 West 57th Street. Around this time, Charles stopped trusting Edna and virtually kept her a prisoner in the penthouse. The relationship kept deteriorating further until he lost his temper and beat her to death with a telephone. Edna's bodyguards then grabbed Charles and threw him out the window. The penthouse stayed vacant for several years before a man named Carlton Alsop rented it. Carlton's time there wasn't pleasant. He claimed that he and visitors would see disturbing images. He also claimed he would hear the click-clack of high heels. And arguments between two invisible people. Things got so bad that Carlton's wife left him. His dogs had multiple breakdowns and Carlton committed himself to an asylum. He eventually abandoned the penthouse altogether. No one else has lived in the penthouse, but today it is used to display art exhibitions. In 1950, 
People in Times Square witnessed a very strange man just appear out of thin air. The man was dressed in Victorian clothing and even had mutton chop sideburns, which were definitely not in style in the 50s. The man noticed his new surroundings and became very alarmed. So alarmed that he ran into an intersection and was unfortunately killed when he was hit by a car. Police searched the man and found some business cards with the name of Rudolph Fence. They then looked through the records to find out where he lived. They found a Rudolph Fence Jr., but there was one problem. He had died a while ago when he was an old man, and this Rudolph wasn't that old. Confused, the police questioned Rudolph Jr.'s widow, and what she said shocked them. The mystery man was her father-in-law, who had disappeared in 1876. It seemed that Rudolph Sr. had traveled 74 years into the future. Sorry, but this urban legend has been debunked. This story started being spread around in 1953 after a man found it in a science fiction book that had been written in 1951. He then reprinted the story into a booklet and didn't include the fact that the story wasn't true. I wanted to share this debunked urban legend because it reminded me of a story I read about when I was a child, about a soldier that disappeared from the Philippines only to reappear in Mexico City the same day in 1593. There were so many New York urban legends that I will definitely be making more urban legend videos about this state in the future. Do not forget to leave a like and subscribe if you have enjoyed this video. And if you already have, thank you very much!